Hello, today we have with us Oren Hershkowitz, the CEO of Enlivex Therapeutics, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker ENLV. Oren, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Happy to be back. And LiveX is pioneering a novel approach to treating disease, not by treating symptoms or individual disease markers, but by restoring immune balance through something called macrophage reprogramming. For viewers new to this concept, Oren, can you explain what that means in practical terms and why this approach could be a breakthrough across multiple serious conditions? Right. So I'll try to keep it simple. Uh, this is a completely new novel uh, idea of treating inflammatory disease. And the way we are targeting those diseases is by targeting specific immune cells called macrophages, as you said. Now, macrophages are important immune cells. They have many roles. What, part of what they do is clear dying cells and, and do many activities, response patches, and so on. But in some diseases, they actually become part of the pathophysiology of the disease. They promote inflammation in cases where they no longer need to do that. So what we're doing is we are tar targeting those macrophages, we reprogram them, we modulate them, and change their activity from a pro-inflammatory cell to kind of an anti-inflammatory, a more cell that push back to resolution of the immune system, right? And because this, this phenomena is, is, occurs in many different diseases, actually, we can use our platform to treat inflammatory, many different inflammatory indications. And LiveX is generating a lot of attention for its work in knee osteoarthritis, which is a $7 billion global market. What has the response been so far to your interim clinical data? Right. So we're, we're drawing attention because this is really a an, uh, an, an severe unmet medical condition. Very, very, very common. 10% uh, of the adults in the U.S. are suffering from osteoarthritis. And mainly what they're suffering from is pain. It's limiting their daily life, right, activities. And what we did, we injected our Cetra, we injected our Cetra to uh, 15 patients and monitored their pain, their function, and so on. We saw 50% drop in their pain report and improve in substantial, statistically significant improvement in the functionality. Uh, and that's extremely exciting. And now we're waiting for the randomized control data to evaluate the uh, the the. the comprehensive response of additional patients. Now, can you give us a sense of the timeline ahead? When should investors expect top-line phase two data and what would successful results mean for Enlivex? Sure, so uh, the, as I said, the phase one was already completed, which is really the six months, the three months and six months data. It's not just the data was statistically significant, it was also durable. So the effect was maintained between three months and six months, and that's very important. In terms of the phase two, it's a phase, the phase two part is a, a randomized control, really sizable study. We just uh, announced a complete enrollment, 130 patients, more than 130 patients uh, enrolled in those. And we're expecting the uh, three months uh, readout actually very soon, by August, the latest. So it's really just around the corner. Uh, we're still blinded, but you yeah, know, relying on the initial data that we just described, we're very optimistic. Oren, you're also exploring other indications like TMJ, osteoarthritis, and psoriatic arthritis. What does this say about Allocetra's platform potential? So, you know, as I said before, many, many diseases uh, share the same common feature of involving the pro-inflammatory macrophages. And since we're modulating those cells, it's relevant for different indications, including psoriatic arthritis, and TMJ. TMJ, it's actually not a form of osteoarthritis. We have osteoarthritis occurring mostly in the knee and the hip, but it also occurs in the hand uh, joints and in the jaw joints. Actually, this is pretty unique because in this case, we're talking about patients that are younger that suffer from, you know, some of uh, using anxiety or stuff like that that can lead to overuse of our, of our jaw and eventually lead to osteoarthritis. And this is, again, a very severe, life-limiting, debilitating indication. Um, and it, again, suggests that it's a platform. So we're targeting different indications, and eventually we can develop this for different diseases. You have $23.5 million in cash, which gives you a runway through the end of 2026. 
how well positioned is Enlivex to reach its next major milestones? So I think this is a unique situation. I think, uh, you know, we're a small micro cap company, but well, well financed. You know, we had a very plain vanilla capital structure, as you said, $3.5 million. Uh, that cover all of our activity until the end of 2026, including the one you just described. You know, the readout from the, uh, the basal thumb, osteoporosis, DMJ, and so on. Um, I, we are planning ahead, ahead already for our follow-up studies in, in knee osteoarthritis. Uh, the data that we just discussed about that is expected by August, and probably for that, we'll do an additional financing to cover those uh, follow-up studies of phase two, three. But all other activities are actually one funded within the current capital uh, that we have. Oren, your leadership team has a strong track record, including a $560 million exit and a partnership with Pfizer. How does that experience shape your strategy today? Well, it definitely shaped our strategy. I mean, the, the timeline, so the time point that we did that exactly, you know, a deal with Pfizer uh, that eventually lead to a drug that is currently approved today, it's called Angenla was after we, we had a successful clinical phase two data. Um, and that's more or less what we are also targeting in our case. Uh, we're, we're planning to generate uh, you know, quality, significant clinical data that will allow us eventually uh, to seek for a partner that will work with us for the late stage and potentially commercialize the drug for the different indication. So it's part of our strategy. But we are also working on continuing the development in Neostat so we can take this asset and uh, to the next clinical stage um, and in parallel look for partnership to kind of maximize the potential of this drug. Final question, Oren. What is the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in Enlivex right now? Okay, it's a great question. I think, first of all, you know, we're currently uh, a public company trading on NASDAQ around cash so from a, a, a you know the exposure here is small and on the other hand we have a strong leadership we had a strong science we have several clinical milestones one is just coming ahead you know in, in an unmet medical condition um and i think all of this together if you take that into account makes it a very very interesting and appealing uh opportunity for investors oren thank you for being with us today Thank you very much.